In this one, we're gonna set up a Jupyter project on your local system. That is Mac, Windows, or Linux. The idea is really simple. We download Python, we use the built-in virtual environment manager. Inside of that virtual environment manager, we install and run Jupyter. Now, of course, this is not the only way to do it, but it's the way I'll cover. Another way to do it would be Anaconda or Docker. If you wanna see those, let me know in the comments and we'll talk about it then. Now, what Jupyter does is it allows us to run interactive notebooks for all sorts of really cool things. We're not gonna cover exactly what Jupyter does. Instead, we just wanna get it up and running and leave the what it does for another time. Now, I will say running notebooks can be done elsewhere though. Google Colab is a good example of that and so is DeepNote. These are how you can actually run different kinds of notebooks or Jupyter notebooks which has also been known as IPython notebooks in the past as well, because that's actually where it started, IPython. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go to python.org, hover over downloads and click on Python 3.9 or Python 4 or whatever future version of Python. More than likely what we're doing here is gonna be pretty much the same across the board. If you need help installing Python, let me know in the comments. But now we're gonna go ahead and open up that installer and the key here for Windows users is to make sure that it's added to your path. Everyone else, you're gonna just be able to pretty much follow along with the installer itself, and then you will install it, it's gonna run it, and then eventually, once it's finished, you'll have to open up the terminal or PowerShell. So if you're on Windows, it's called PowerShell. If you're on Mac or Linux, it's called Terminal, and this is your command line interface. Now I will say you can use something like VS Code or any sort of IDE where you can actually write inside of the terminal or the command line as well. But of course, I'm just trying to keep this focused on just Jupyter. So once Python actually finishes, we'll come back and create our virtual environment. All right, so Python 3.9 was installed for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this out and move into trash. Now, in some cases, you might actually have to create a new terminal window to run this. Terminal and PowerShell are built into the systems that they're on. So if you need to help finding them, they're typically in like your applications folder. And in the case of the actual Mac, it's actually in utilities and near the bottom for terminal, right? So if you're on Windows, you just search for PowerShell and open that up. Linux users, terminal is gonna be really easy to find for you. Anyways, so now that we've got this, let's just verify that we have Python 3 installed with typing out Python and then dash capital V. In my case, and also Linux users cases, you'll see Python 2.7 in here most likely. So you might actually have to type out Python 3 dash V. Now, if you're a Windows user, you'll probably just be using standard just Python and you'll see 3.9 in there, assuming you did add it to the path because there is an option in the installation to do that. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and create a virtual environment. And all I'm gonna do here is CD to my desktop or wherever you wanna store your code, your project code. I'm just making it really simple and putting it in my desktop and I'm gonna make a directory called VENV. This is often what it's called. You'll see it as virtual environment and they will go ahead and jump into VENV, right? So VENV stands for virtual environment. Now, what a virtual environment does is sort of isolate our code from each other. So if I do Python 3 dash uh, module pip and then freeze, so dash m pip freeze, I can actually see all of the things in Python 3 that are installed on my system. Notice that Jupyter is nowhere to be found, okay? That's important. The reason it's important has to do with the fact that if I try to run Jupyter Notebook, it may or may not work on my system. There's a good chance that it won't work on your system. And the only reason it's working on mine is because I actually do have it installed somewhere on my system. So what I wanna do is actually isolate that from everyone else, right? I wanna isolate it from every other project, which is why I create a virtual environment. So we use Python 3 or Python, whichever one yields the 3.9, right? So use that version right here. And then we just do the dash M for module VENV -E and a period at the end. Now, if you change this to being a absolute path or a relative path, it will actually create that virtual environment in wherever you put this path. Obviously putting that period here puts it into the current directory that I'm in. Once you enter, it's gonna create a few things for you. 
Yours may or may not look like this exactly, but it's gonna be close. Now, if you're on a Mac or Linux, you'll do source bin slash activate to activate this virtual, virtual environment. If you're on a Windows, it's gonna be dot slash scripts slash activate. That's actually how you'll activate it. And what it's gonna look like is like this. So if I do source bin slash activate, you'll see the name of the folder that you're in, which if you do PWD or DIR, if you're on Windows, you'll see this folder, actually the name of that folder activated as your virtual environment, right? Some people really like to separate their Python versions for the virtual environment. So you'd call this like Python 3.9 or 3.9 or something like that. I personally like naming my virtual environments after my projects, but it's completely up to you. Now that we're in here, I can actually type out Python-V no matter what system I'm on. So this sort of isolates this version of Python or this project from other projects, right? That are using virtual environments. And now again, if I do Python-M pip freeze, I shouldn't see anything installed like I did a moment ago, right? So I had all of these things installed. This is again, another reason to use those virtual environments. And so I'm gonna go ahead and install Jupyter here. Really simple, that's it, just installing Jupyter. I'll let it run for a moment. So as we see here, Jupyter installs all sorts of packages in here. And this is great to make it run completely, right? So Jupyter Notebooks are actually servers. So we can actually do Jupyter Notebook just like that. And what that will actually end up doing is it'll give us these links here. So each one of these links, I can actually just copy and paste into my local browser. There's also a good chance that your browser did open up for you and you'll see something like this, okay? So naturally, we now have Jupyter Notebooks installed and running. So let's just do a quick little test on one of these notebooks by creating a new one right here. So in my case, I have Python 3, but you can absolutely use other kernels, like you can use a, a Node.js kernel, you can use a Go kernel. There's a lot of them out there. Uh, but anyway, so we'll use the Python 3 one. And now in here, I can actually write some code so I can print out something like hello world. And then I can run this code by clicking run here, or I can hit shift enter and that will also run it. And so the nice thing about this is if I do something like ABC 123, I can print out ABC, of course it's 123. And then I can set ABC equaling to 456 right here. And then if I go up, and run that code again, it uses the most recent state or the most recent declaration, which is what all of these numbers do. Now we could spend a lot of time talking about Jupyter, but this alone is a bit different than just writing a Python module and running that module. This will allow me to do a lot of rapid iteration, especially in the realm of data. This is really just scratching the surface, maybe not even the surface, it's like basically dropping a, a little pin on exactly what you can do with Jupyter because Jupyter itself is really just an environment for writing code, just a little bit different than what you might be used to. Now I will say the actual notebook environment itself, it is pretty nice to use it in things like Colab and, and DeepNote and also even VS Code has a way to run these as well, where it just looks a little bit different, but it still executes and runs in the same manner. So whenever you're seeing these running notebook environments, you should be aware that it's essentially trying to do the same thing, which is executing code in some sort of order and making it a little bit more interactive for you. So the other part of this, if you are not super technical, you will see some that are like hello world and they're actually a document, right? So some document uh, about code. The cool thing about that is we can actually run this document now, even if we don't really know what's going on. I could just literally hit run, 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 or I can do restart and run all, and this would actually run the whole notebook, right? Which is actually really, really nice and something that I highly encourage that you try out. And if you wanna see more, please let me know in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe if you wanna see some additional software and coding tools and techniques. Anyways, thanks for watching.